Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below to see all of those discounted games. Hello my friends, today we are heading to the woods, to the North Woods, a quaint little village in the middle of the woods with beautiful uh, scenery and cute little critters. Today we're taking a look at Four North Woods. This is a solo only trick taking game. Let me show you how it's played, I'll see you on the other side. Four North Road is that solo trick taking game, has four suits, the cards range from one to eight and there's one card of each number for each suit. You're also going to have many of these adorable little critters, uh, they're all going to have little abilities. Now let me show you how all these things play in. Now the game is played over eight rounds. Each round you're going to get a hand of eight cards shuffled from the deck like this. Now each game there's going to be eight fiefs. Now these are going to be uh, cards that are randomly placed on top of these fiefs that are going to give you certain abilities. Also going to totally tell you what the trump suit is for that fief. You're also going to get four cards that are going to be your sort of allies for the whole game that you're going to be able to use for special abilities. Now I have set up the basic beginner game where we have all four jacks here. This gives you sort of powerful abilities and these are all randomized, but in future games, you can randomize all this so that you have all sorts of different abilities that you're gonna be used each round. Now important here are numbers. They range from zero to seven. So you're gonna decide which thief you're going to go to and which person you're going to basically have a conversation with. And again, if I pick this one, this one likes to talk about, uh, I forget what this is thematically, like woods or whatever. And uh, so his, his, uh, his trump suit when you, when you go against him or talk to him are the yellow suit. Or if I went here, it'd be the paws, for example. And this tells you how many exact tricks you need to win in order to have this person sort of, you know, be a friendly ally for you. But I'm feeling pretty good here, so I am going to go over here and select, I think I'm gonna be able to win five tricks based upon this trump and the cards that I have in my hand. So what's going to happen is in this deck, it's going to be again a conversation with that ruler that we're at, with that thief. They're going to play a card. Ooh, they played a three. This actually happens to be the trump suit of that ruler. So we have to follow suit if we can, otherwise we can play any card. Now we actually have this. So in this case we would win because the five is greater than the three. It's the trump suit. We're able to follow that lead suit. So I'm going to put it here, which is a scoring pile. That will go again. They come up with another card. So they're playing a three of that suit. Okay, so I look at the cards that I have left. I could beat them with these two. I have to follow suit if I can. I could beat them with either of these two cards. I could purposely lose or slough the trick with that one. Remember, I only want to win five. I've already won one. Let's go ahead and win this one. Let's play the eight. So I'm going to go ahead and put over here. This is sort of the scoring pile here. So I know that I've won sort of two tricks there. So then another one's going to come out. Ooh, it is a two. Now, Ooh, I might want to, it's going to be hard to pump the brakes on this one because it's going to be very easy to win, but you know what? Let's slough it because we're already doing pretty good. So we're also just going to put this one in that discard pile there. So then we're going to have another one and you're going to keep doing this until either this deck is empty or we're out of cards. You have to play till one of those two things happens. So they're played a one of that. Okay, well, we could play this. We've won it. Now we're at the three tricks. We only want to win two left, and I have four cards left. So we're going to need to lose some or start to use some of the, these abilities. So let's see how this goes here. All right, so we've got a five. Now, I did have an eight here. Let's play it. Um, and so far, we've been just doing this straight up just to show you the very basics of this. Okay, now let's say we have a one. Okay, so let's say the next card is a four of red. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty here, because uh, I only got three left, but I have to follow. So now I've won all five tricks that I want to win. I don't want to win any more. I want to select the, like, the next two, lose the next two tricks. Otherwise, I'm not going to win this specific, the points for this thief. So we're going to, uh, now before you, you flip over a card, you can exhaust and use the ability of any of these characters. Now let's look at some of these. Discard all cards that match the current ruler's suit. That might work if I want to get rid of cards. If you're holding fewer than eight cards, draw cards until you have eight cards in hand. This is good if you need to win more tricks. Draw two cards, then discard two cards. This is good if you kind of want to see what's going on. This one is exchange the ruler on the thief you're visiting to a new ruler up to two thieves away. So that means I could swap this one with either these two or these two, because they're all neutral, they haven't been played yet. And why would we do that? Well, a lot of the reason why, well, for in this case, we have a card that allows us to discard all, all cards that match the current ruler's suit. Well, maybe we want Trump to be different depending on the cards we have. Maybe we want to switch it to Trump to be this or this or this. You could use that ability and swap them and now Trump has changed. So that'll give you a lot of flexibility. 
So let's say we do this. We draw two cards, then discard two cards. So those were my cards. These are the ones I drew. Ooh, okay. Well, we were trying to lose two. So let's get rid of this and this, and now we're left with this. But remember, this one is Trump. I think we're looking good on this one. So this is a four of yellow. Now we can't follow, so we can play either card. We don't want to play this because this is Trump, because then that would allow us to learn the trick. So we'll play this one. And we'll put it there, and now we have one left. Now you can only activate one ability each sort of uh, card. And because I have this, which is discard all cards that match the current ruler's suit, this suit is this, I can discard my last card, and I'm out. And I would have scored. Now the way this scores is, I won my five tricks, so this one comes down. What, and this means two things. Number one is I'm going to get two points at the end of the game for this. Now the harder it is to win, this one's three points if I win this one because you need six, and this one is four points because you need seven. So on the edges, whether it's like six or seven or zero or one, they're worth more because they're harder to win, where the ones in the middle aren't as hard to win. Now you shuffle up the deck, you look at your cards, you would select a new fief to go to, then you can bring in a new friendly uh, ruler. Now this is friendly because we won. If not, this would have been discarded completely, we would not be able to bring him in. So what this means is this one says, name any suit. Draw two cards, then discard all cards of that suit in your hand. That's good if you're trying to sort of like slough and try once you've got your bid, things like that. If I think I want to use this this round, depending on where I'm at and which cards I have in my hand, then I can take this one and cover up one of my other rulers. So let's say if I were using this, I would normally be trying to avoid suits, right? And so maybe I also want to get rid of something that would give me a bunch of cards, which is like, hey, if you're holding fewer than eight cards, draw them. So I'm gonna cover this one with this because that kind of makes sense with what I'm trying to do this round based upon my cards, based upon the fief I'm going for, the amount of tricks I need, things like that. So now on my turn, uh, I can use this as one of my rulers and activate that ability. But at the end of this round, whether I use this or not, this goes out of the game and I'm back to my standard ones. That's why these are really important because these are the four you'll have by default for every turn this game, but this could be completely randomized by having different ones each game. Now that's how you play the basic game and at the end you'll count up all the points and you'll get, you know, you're either trying to play an, an easy, medium, or difficult game uh, and you see if you've made either one of those, any one of those thresholds. But there's also 12 other cards with this symbol in the bottom right, and these are sort of advanced ones that have some more complicated abilities. You can mix these in uh, somewhat, somewhat randomly, but not really, uh, in with the deck to do some different setups and such. Uh, but you can pause here to read these abilities, but it gives you even more variability in the game. There's also a scenario booklet where you're trying to get 16 points in each of the scenarios. They have scenarios for different uh, uh, seasons here. But look at this, they have different setup different special rules and a specific challenge that you can try to make. So there are 16 of these different scenarios uh, that really make things a lot more difficult as well. So there's literally unlimited replayability here. All right, well there is for Northwood. Now I wanna preface this by saying, I'm not a huge solo gamer. Um, if I'm gonna play something solo, usually I bring up, you know, Baseball Highlights 2045 app or other apps where, you know, I have short time and things get played quickly and things like that. But every once in a while, I will play co uh, yeah, solo games. Usually I end up playing like a cooperative game that can be played solo and doing the puzzle by myself. So, but I, so I'm not a real big solo player. So that's me coming to this, but I do love trick taking games. So that's why I want to try this one out. And so I do want to preface this by saying this is uh, a very highly rated solo game on Board Game Geek. I mean, if you search for solo only games, this is the seventh highest rated game on Board Game Geek, which is just insanely high for good reason. And let me tell you why. So first of all, the adorable art. Uh, gosh, it just draws you in. It's so cute. Um, it just is light, just like the sort of game kind of is. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Love the art. Also, the card quality. I love the cards in this game. It's made of that like PVC sort of plastic style cards. I love the, these cards because they shuffle really nice. You can bend them when they're shuffling and they don't stay bent. Um, they, they're really slippery, so they, they kind of feel good in the hands and they're waterproof uh, or water resistant, I guess I should say. The only other game that I'd seen that had these cards, and there's probably plenty that have them, but like Two Rooms in a Boom had this. And I loved the card quality of that because you're constantly, you're holding the cards and keeping them secret the whole game. So people's sweaty hands would get all of the cards and I think that's why they did it there. I don't know why more card games don't use this type of card. I love it and I would love to see it in more 
more games. Uh, number two, I love that this game is so tiny, it just fits in your pocket. It literally does. It is such a small box. Put it right in your pocket. Just, you know, go somewhere, go to the coffee shop, put it out and play. And it doesn't take too much time. You need a table. This isn't going to be one of those games you could, you could play on the plane at Gen Con. Uh, you might be able to if you did like two rows, but it fits in your pocket. Table presence, you're probably going to need a normal size table. Um, but let's get into the gameplay now. I love that uh, you're deciding which thief to go after after seeing your cards. So you draw your cards, you're looking at them, you're looking at how many cards you have of each suit, you're looking at what numbers you have, then you're looking at, from that, you're looking at A, how many tricks do I think I can win with this? And B, if I go for that thief, like let's say I wanna win six tricks, which, uh, which sort of um, uh, you know, person am I going there to to try to win because that tells me what the trump suit is and so and again that's sort of randomized every game so it's always going to be sort of different as to which decision you're making even right after you get your cards dealt you've got a good decision and a very important one as to as to what to do uh, i love that your trig triggering ability this is the, the best part of this game is the game just makes you feel clever because you'll be in a tough bind you're like oh man how am i ever going to make this bid but you trigger some abilities uh you know of your characters to make things happen. And sometimes you're comboing the game, like, oh, we'll do this and I'll do this. And then I'll do this and I'll do this. Oh, and now I can sort of back in and make my bid. It just, almost every time you play, almost every thief, actually, you'll do at least one thing. When you trigger ability to do something, you're like, ha, I made my bid, great. It's just like, it is so clever. It's so unique and it just, that's the best part of the game is it really does make you feel clever. I love that you're bringing allies in. So after you have a friend, after you make your bid perfectly, that that character can become a future ally. And at the beginning of the round, you can decide to bring one of those allies in and possibly use them or not for a one-time ability. And I also like that you, when you decide to bring them in, you either use them or lose them. You have to, first of all, you have to cover one of your other four main abilities that you have each round for that game. Uh, but then. You either use it or use it, use it or lose it. If you don't use it, it's gone for the game, so you better use it. Know when, for depending on which one, which which uh, thief you're going to, whether you want zero tricks, eight, seven tricks, whatever, you need to bring in the right person that, that has an ability that goes along with that. But I like that it's one time use because it, it does add some tension to it. Huge thing here is lots of variability in the setup. Um, I showed you the beginner setup for most of the video and it, that's a great place to start, but I love that you could just shuffle all those cards up and have a, a variable thing for your main four characters every time you play. Also, there's also the starred characters, which are a little bit more, more complicated. You can mix those in as well. So I love the variability, even in just the main game. I also love that they, had, they, they put together all these advanced scenarios in this little booklet. So if you ever do get bored with the base game with all the variability, you can go through and try to win some scenarios that have some certain win conditions, some certain things, some, some rules that might change and things like that. They really have thought about a lot here. Um, so on the negative side of things, I don't really have a whole lot of negative things to say here. This game is fantastic. Uh, the scoring system, yeah, they have, it's, I mean, it's a solo game. It's not whether you're gonna win or lose and you end the game. You'll just play, you'll see how many thieves you got and you'll get a score. The harder ones are worth more score, more points, the less ones are worth less. And then it's like, hey, did you win? Well, were you playing an easy, medium or difficult game? Yeah, there's not a lot of attention to the scoring, but quite honestly, I'm not playing this game for the scoring. I'm playing it for the experience, trying to see if I can get a perfect score. Um, so yeah, it's not super tense from the scoring system, but for me, it doesn't matter. This game is just so amazing. For all these reasons, and because it is so unique, it is absolutely staying in my gaming library. So it is gaining a saxophone serenade. Uh, and one of the reasons why I timed the video when I did is because they actually, this game has been out of print for a little while and then they're just getting it back in print now. So this is gonna be cool. People are gonna be able to order this game again for Northwood. Let's hit the saxophone serenade. <laughs> Toppers upgrades every game you play, and if you miss their 4.0 Kickstarter, you can still late pledge and take advantage of over 40 unlocked stretch goals and early fulfillment. This campaign featured a new young Sherlock table, perfect for children's gaming and movable coffee table, 10 new thematic mats by top artists like Vincent Dutre, a new designer art series Minecraft topper with thematic art from Brent Woodside, and some of the best package deals they've had, including game mat bundles. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below to late pledge now.